Hi everyone, welcome to Hub Bites. I'm Sunil Reggae, consultant psychiatrist. Today I'm going to be talking about tips and secrets to blitz your MCQ exam. It doesn't matter if you're a medical student planning your psychiatry exams in the future, a surgeon, or in school, it doesn't matter. For your MCQ exams, best of five or extended matching questions, these tips will really help you succeed. Now, my personal experience with MCQ exams, you might ask, I've done loads of MCQ exams over the years, not only in school, but then for medicine when I had to move from uh, Dubai to India, entrance exams, then from India doing my PLAB to the UK, then from the UK to Australia, again, loads of MCQ exams. And now I teach MCQs and EMQ strategies through psychscene.com. So what are the key things that you've got to know to blitz your MCQ exams? Firstly, when you're studying, it's important to recognize that all the new information that you're bringing in is going into your, is sort of the prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobes working really hard, right? And it's your working memory and working memory is really short, right? Seven plus or minus two items only. What you've got to do is to start moving that information that's there in your working memory right at the back to the long-term memory, which is in your hippocampus. And in that long-term memory, you've got the implicit memory and the explicit memory. Now, forget about the implicit memory. That's in your OSCE, in your procedural aspects. We're going to talk about the explicit memory. The explicit memory is the declarative memory, and that is your MCQ your EMQs, extended matching questions. So in the exam, when you have to think about something, you're going to have to pull it out of your hippocampus, the declarative memory, which is your semantics, meaning, words, etc. Now remember, if you want to push information from your working memory to your hippocampus, rehearse, repeat, and try to connect it to clinical experience or your real life experience. So look around and try to make connections and you'll remember things really well. Now let's look at two key things you've got to know specifically while preparing for the MCQs. One is pattern and word recognition. So your focus when you're studying is on word recognition and pattern recognition. These are buzzwords that you got to look at. So whenever you're reading a question, there is going to be specificity, specific words that will then prompt your brain to bring out that association. And the second one is creating a mind map. Why a mind map? Because generally what happens is candidates are preparing for the exam by reading textbooks and textbooks are structured with in relation to only one topic, for example, depression, hepatic encephalopathy. But in clinical practice and in your MCQs, they're going to combine alcohol, hepatic encephalopathy with clinical signs. So what happens is you need to branch out and have mind maps, random ways of bringing information and making links. For example, and I'm going to give you a buzzword, right? So if I see a word recognition, accommodation reflex present, ARP, I know that that is also linked to Argyle Robertson pupil, ARP, which is part of neurosyphilis. So I've got a mind map occurring of neurosyphilis. But I also know that neurosyphilis is associated with the mnemonic paresis, P-A-R-E-S-I-S. -E so I can study that. But I can also go to other eye signs and ask myself, what are the other eye signs I need to know? For example, internuclear ophthalmoplegia and multiple sclerosis. I need to think, you might think about exophthalmos in hypothyroidism. So you see the eye signs becomes a little heuristic that I've created, a little category, because I'm trying to extend my memory by chunking. Working memory is short, short term memory, seven plus or minus two items. I've got to extend it, then rehearse it, and then push it back into my long-term memory because when I see an association, bang, my explicit memory will bring that uh, association in front of me. Then I've got subcortical dementia. Then I ask myself, what are the subcortical parts of the brain? 
basal ganglia, as you can see on this side. So then I will ask myself, what are the parts of the basal ganglia? Chordate, putamen, substantia nigra, subthalamic nucleus. And I will think chordate putamen, Huntington's, substantia nigra, Parkins, uh, nigra, Parkinson's disease. So you see, I'm making connections all the time because I'm creating clusters of buzzwords together. That's the pattern and word recognition. Late life depression comes in, in subcortical dementia. Late life depression is linked to white matter hyperintensities hyper as a buzzword. Then I think about neuroimaging as a whole. What are the aspects of neuroimaging? I need to know multiple sclerosis, what happens there? Um, then neuroimaging with SPECT and PET scans, etc. Now, Huntington's might come in as part of subcortical dementia. So then I think, what are the genetic aspects? Autosomal dominant. What are the other autosomal dominant conditions I need to know about? What is autosomal dominant condition from a genetic perspective? What are the trinucleotide repeats, CAG in this case? Then you might say, what are the other repeats I need to know? CGG in fragile X syndrome, etc. Syphilis, CSF VDRL as a test of fluorescent treponemal antibodies. Um, test, but CSF. Then I ask myself, what are the other CSF aspects I need to know? Maybe oligoclonal bands in um, oligoclonal bands in um, multiple sclerosis or CSF fourteen three three protein in Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. And I will keep going on. The advantage of this is you are making connections of second layer, third layer, fourth layer, with clusters of buzzwords together, because then. In the exam, when you're reading a question and you spot that buzzword, your explicit memory will fire to give you that particular answer. So to summarize, remember to rehearse, repeat and connect it to experience. Doesn't matter. It might be physics, might be chemistry, might be biology, any of that. Connect it to experience. For example, if you were learning MCQs with regards to economics or finance, think about a practical example in life. Rehearsal, repetition to push information back into your hippocampus long-term memory. Then focus on pattern and word recognition, buzzwords and clusters, because that's going to be easier because the larger basket you create as a cluster, the easier it becomes to fit in as a category. And then mind maps. Mind maps, why? Because you want randomness because that's how questions are created. So allow your mind to, to roam freely in a way and try to make connections everywhere. So that in summary, repetition, pattern word recognition, and mind map. Remember this and you will be successful in your MCQ exams and blitz them. Good luck for the future. I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, obviously leave us a like button. We've got lots of other videos like this on neurobiology of excellence, etc. So do subscribe to our channel as well. But if you've got any other tips, leave them in the comment section as well as to how you've prepared. Look forward to seeing you in another edition of Hubbytes. Until then, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.